welcome to the react js complete course 2023 so in this course you will learn a lot of things like the introduction to the react the prerequisites the behind the scenes of the react the jsx and its rules the hooks of the react and then we'll move on to a bookstore project and after that we'll move on to the advanced things like the optimizations the performance review the improvements and then the bonus lectures and inside the bonus you will see some beautiful things like moving on into the next js moving on into the month stack and full stack and so many things so let's start with the react js tutorial for the 2023 so what is the react js so the react js is an open source front-end library for building scalable, dynamic, and rich user interfaces. So it is declarative, efficient, and flexible JavaScript library for building the reusable UI components. And it is an open source and the components-based front-end library, which is responsible for the view layer of this application. So we have three layers inside any application, the model, view, and the controller. The model and the controllers are from the backend side because a model is a separate model like if you are creating a project on the books on the movies then the movies are the models and the controllers are used to control the actions like the api requests from that model and then the view part comes from the react.js which is the ui part in which everything is visible to the user in which we visualize everything to the user so that's the react.js which is used for the view part for building the scalable and dynamic and rich user interfaces so that's it for this react but why do we need the react so the modern problems with the html5 was we need to write the same duplicate code inside every html page so if you are creating an application with the html then we need to write same duplicate code inside every html page like if we build a navigation bar and we have a footer and then we have the content on the web pages so we need to write same duplicate code and then we need to just modify the content page inside every html page because the nav bar and the footer is almost same and these two things doesn't need to be refreshed or reload so we use the same duplicate code inside every html page structure so i will show you a demo in a second so here is the demo so we are into the visual studio code and here we have a html project so here you can see inside the about first we have the header and then we have the section and then we have the section of the footer so these three things are there inside every html page and then you can see if we move on into the blog.html the same thing we have here and then you can see we have the footer and the header inside every html page which is a major issue in the code duplication so we have a duplicate code inside a lot of pages of the html even in the contact even in the index.html even in the menu the products and so many things so there you can see that's the first problem with the html same duplicate code written inside every html page and the second we have a no single page app structure so inside every html page if we run an html page then the page is always refreshed but inside the react.js we have a solution we have a dynamic approach in which the page doesn't even reload we just click on a page and then it automatically moves on into the next dynamic page without refreshing the page and then inside the html we have a complicated dynamic rendering so we need to include script and then inside a script.js file we need to include the javascript so that's a lot of work if we are into the modern development because in the modern approach we don't need to waste time into these things like attaching a script to the html file creating a script.js file adding the scripts to it and so many complicated approach so here in the modern world we don't need that complicated approach here we need a simple approach so here i want to show you a demo of the react.js app as well so if we move on into the app.js so i've created a file of the app.js and then you can see inside the react app we only have a return statement so inside the return statement we are returning a div because these are the jsx code and we are returning a div and then you can see instead of creating about.html the blog.contact.index so this app component is ready to be served on the web page and inside that we are rendering the things one by one first we are rendering the header we are rendering the content and then we are adding the footer and the content will be changed every time we hit any of the element inside the header or the footer and then you can see instead of writing all of these html files like this instead of writing header inside every code here we have just written a header as a reusable component so that's a reusable component and inside this component we can write the html code and then you can see inside every page the content is going to wrapped up by the header and the footer so that's the dynamic approach of the react js that we want to use so that's why the react has been developed to solve these kind of problems 
So here we have the use case of the React.js application. So instead of writing the header inside every HTML page, we create a separate network component. So I have took this image from the Gatsby and it is also an open source library and the credits of this image goes to the Gatsby. So here you can see inside this, we have a web page. So inside this image, you can see in the top navbar. So we have this navbar and then you can see it is a separate navbar component. So it is a separate component which can be reused by any other file. So what we are doing, so here inside the React.js, we have a single container and then we wrap the elements inside that. So what this page has been doing, so first it has created the navbar component, which is a reusable component. And then you can see this highlighted area is the site navbar. So here you can see we have the sidebar component, which is also created. And then you can see we have this content inside this. First, we have the product grid. So the grid is like this highlighted area. We have this highlighted area. And then we have the product card, which is a reusable component again. And then you can see inside every card here, we are using the product card component because that's a reusable component. So what we are doing here, so we are just updating the content of the component, but the styling remains the same for every other component. So that's the use case of the React. So how can we make the application very performant because we have the separate components and then we don't need to reuse the same layout again and again for every other page. So these are the use cases of the React.js to make the reusable components and to render it into the UI by dynamically updating their content. So that's the power of the React. So now let's see some prerequisites before learning the React. So you need to have knowledge of the ECMAScript 6 JavaScript knowledge because in the ES5 JavaScript, the functions are used to be the classes as well, the objects as well. But in the ES6, everything is sorted out. And then you need to learn some DOM manipulations before moving into the React.js because they are required in the React as well. And you need to apply the dynamic styles and this optional. So inside the JavaScript as well, you can apply the dynamic styles into any HTML page. So that's how we use inside the React. So that's it for the React and if you doesn't know these three things then I have a dedicated video on the essential JavaScript skills which are required for the React. So I will put the link inside the description then you can watch this video as well. So let's move on into the first React.js application. So from now on we will be creating a first React.js application. So we'll create the application. We will understand the overview of this application, the structure and so many things. So let's start with it. So before creating your first React.js application, so you need to install the Node.js in your system. So you can use this site, the Node.js.org, and then you can install this 18.12.1 version, which is the long term support version. So you can install and then you can just come back with us. And this is the official documentation of the React.js. You can just have the UI, interactivity and so many things. So first of all, what you need to do? So you need to move on into the installation and then you can just click on the start a new React project. And after that, you can just read the documentation as well. And it's very helpful. And you can see this is the command which creates a brand new React.js application. So you can just copy that and what you need to do. And then you can open the Visual Studio code. And then you need to open a folder inside it. And after that, you need to click on the terminal and select a new terminal from there. And after that, what you need to do inside this terminal. So here you need to run this command of the npx create react app so this is the command of the create react app and then this is the name of the application and make sure you are not using a uppercase letter inside this application name because that is restricted so you can use the my app with that so you can name your application whatever name that you want so i am giving the name of the default of the my app so now we need to hit enter and the new react.js application will be then installed within very few moments inside this my app directory so here you can see we got the package.json as well and after a few moments you will be seeing a lot of code here which will contain the dependencies which will contain the structures which will contain some scripts so so many things so let's just wait for a moment till it completes so here you can see the react.js app has been created so here you can see we have the my app directory and inside that first we have the node modules so these are the modules which are installed with the react along with the react because these are the packages which runs behind the hood to make the React application work. So these are the modules that we need. And then inside the public folder, you can see we have the fab icon.io. So here you can see this React icon is gonna use there inside this tab inside the Chrome window. And then the second thing we have, it is the index.html. And make sure you know that this is the only index.html file inside your React application. Because here we have a div, which has the ID equals to the root. And then we dynamically render the entire application inside this div id equals to the root which is rendered dynamically so we will dynamically render the content only in this div 
so here you can see we have everything inside the index.js we have the meta links you can add for the seos you have the link you have the title so you can change the title as well you can change the title the first app as well and then you have the structure like if you don't have the javascript enabled so this will give you an error of the you need to enable javascript and then you have the only div which has the id equals to the root and then later on you can add more divs as well but as of now we need to keep it default and then you can see we have the logo of the react as well so here you can see we have some logos and after that we have the manifest which is used internally for the react application and then this is of no use and after that we can move on into the source folder and the source folder is the most important folder inside the react application so first we have the css file which is the app.css and then you can see we have just defined some styles of the css and these are just normal css not related to the react and then you can see we have the app.js but we will come to this later but first we will move on into the index.js which is a root file of the react application so this root file renders the content inside the document.get element by id root that we saw just a moment ago so we saw a public folder and then we saw an index.html here we have the div id equals to the root but what index.js is doing so we have the react dom which is the virtual dom so it is creating a root with the document.get element by id root so now this root contains that root and then we are rendering the content of the app directory inside this root so here we don't need the report wet vitals so so we are removing this as of now but i will explain you later that what is this so here this is a component of the app so if a tag starts from the capital letters then it becomes a component so here we have the app which is a component and then we are just rendering inside this root div and then if we just open the app.js so here you can see we are importing the app from the slash app.js so if we move on into the app.js you can see we have some code first we have a function which is the app and then we are returning the code this is a jsx code so we will see about the jsx after this and we are just rendering the div we have the class of the app so here inside the jsx we use the class name instead of the class and then we have the header of the application like again we have the header and then we are just rendering the logo and all like this so what we are doing inside the index.js so we are updating the content of the div with the render function and with the app component so inside this component we are just rendering all of these things and all of the things are going to add inside this div so that's the flow of the react application and then you can see we have the index.css as well and then we have the app.test.js and the app.test is used for the testing purposes of the react application so we'll see about it later and then we have the report web vitals.js as well so this is used for the performance basis so as of now we are going to delete this file because we don't need this and we have the setup test as well and we are going to delete this as well because we don't need that as of now and then you can see inside the source we have the app.test as well so we need to remove this as well so now we only have four or five files the app.css app.js the index.css and the index.js so from these files the app.js is the component and this index.js is a root file because the app.js starts from the capital letter so then it becomes a component inside the react and after that if we just move out from the source and then you can see we have the git ignore files which is used to publish into the git so the git ignore file is used to just ignore some files or modules which we want to skip so here you can see if we are going to publish this application so the node modules folder will be skipped because the node modules contains around 120 or 130 mb of the modules so we don't need to add those modules inside the git and then you can see we have the package.log.json which contains all of the information about the packages that we have installed and the main it is the package.json which contains all of the information about our entire application so it contains the name of the application the version the private as well it is true and then we have some dependencies as well like the testing libraries and then we have the react version of the 18.2 we have the react dom we have the scripts we have the web vitals and we have some scripts as well so if you want to start this application on the development server then we need to run the command of the npm start and it is going to run the command of the react scripts and start and if we want to build this application then we need to run the npm run build and then it will just build this application for the production and then we have the test as well to test this application and then we have the eject as well to eject this from the server and after that we have some lint configs as well and these are of no use as of now so this is the overview of any react.js application so now what we are going to do so we need to again move on into the terminal 
so our terminal is already open and then we need to change the directory into the react.js application so here we have this change directory into the my app directory so inside this directory we have this application and now as we saw inside the script so to start this application on a local development server we need to run the command of the npm and the start so we can run the command of the npm start and it will run this command of the react script start so if we just hit enter so sorry so if we just hit enter there and then you can see the react script start is going to execute and then you can see now it is being executed into the browsers and then you can see now we got this in the development server so here you can see we are rendering this content inside this app.js so if we move on into the app.js if we again move on into the source app.js and then you can see we have the function app which is by default exported and then you can see we have some content inside this like we have the paragraph tag and then you can see here we have the paragraph like the edit source app.js to save and the reload and then if you will just edit this if you will just remove this if you will just add the hello world and then you can see the hello world would be there so you can see instantly we don't even need to refresh the browser you can see the hello world there and then we have the learn react which is the anchor tag and then we have the image as well which has a class name of the app logo which is rotating this so that's it for the react application so that's how we can just create a new react application and now i hope you have understood the overview of this react application and the workflow of this entire project so that's it for this now